Arakara, 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 City of Echoes is the level up dungeon in Ashkatet. This is the abandoned city down below the City of Threats. This is a three boss dungeon where we're dealing with some secret plans of the Spider Queen beneath the city streets. Entering into this dungeon, we're at a high platform and there are several packs of non-elite spiders that we have to pick up and pull rather quickly. Grab all these guys and go all the way down to the bottom of the steps and off to the right side, grabbing the first pack that has some elites in it. Then burn everything down. The start phase of this dungeon is moving across strands of webs towards all sorts of little platforms, picking up spiders and killing them. Throughout the area are these glowing little web sacks. If you ever touch one of these, they explode and then put down a casing of webs, which is going to slow all players within them and deal damage to them over time. Avoiding touching these is pretty ideal to getting fast clears of this dungeon. The trilling attendants have two moves that can be interrupted, Resonating Barrage and Web Blast. The priority should be interrupting the barrages, but Web Blast is a nice extra interrupt if you have one available. The Engorged Crawlers hit the tank relatively hard, and when they get low HP, they're going to put a big green circle around them and then erupt after a short period. <laughs> Killing them before they manage to cast this off is an ideal situation. Throughout the area are a bunch of flying little spider bug things. Picking them up and burning them down quickly is ideal. Quick AoE is all you need for these things. Don't focus them down. On three of the platforms here are going to be mini bosses that are currently channeling a him. As you take down each one, it's slowly going to summon the first boss. Each of these mini bosses that is hemming is going to have three different abilities. First is Poison Bolt. This can be interrupted and should be. Second is Web Spray. This is a large cone that's going to focus in on a player, cast a big AoE damage effect in front of it, and then web the area, slowing all players within the webs. Five step out of these and don't go back into them. Finally, Poison Cloud is going to put green swirls around the area that you just need to move out of. Make your way between the three platforms, pulling as few of the mobs as you possibly can, and clearing out each of these mini bosses. Some of these mini bosses will swap Poison Bolt for Web Bolt and may cast Horrifying Shrill that needs to be interrupted. Upon the death of the third and final mini boss, the boss Avanox is going to spawn on the main large platform. Once Avanox is available, make your way to that big platform. It's going to spawn with several eggs off to the side with webbing around them. After a delay into the fight, she's going to hatch all of those eggs. The new spiders will fixate on the players and slowly walk towards them. You need to slow and burn down each of these different ads before they get to any players. Every time one of these small spiders attacks a target, their damage is increased by 10%. So you definitely don't want to let them maul somebody. Voracious Bite is a big tank mechanic that's just going to cleave onto the tank Using a defensive before this is ideal. Finally, vile webbing is going to cause a lot of swirls to appear around the area. Players need to move out of them. Anybody hit is going to get web wrapped, which is going to stun them for 10 seconds. This can be dispelled and should be if anybody gets caught. Continue rotating through the phases of eggs hatching, killing the eggs, and then burning the boss to get this thing down. Then we're making our way into the city itself. This next set of trash has a lot going on. The blood workers don't do a lot, just pick them up and burn them down. The Bloodstained Assistants do a lot of tank damage, and pulling too many of these could end up chunking your tank faster than your healer can keep them alive for. But the two big things to watch out for are the Hulking Blood Guards. These guys are going to have two little blood workers with them that are going to reduce the damage that they take. Once all the blood workers nearby are down, you're able to focus these things down a lot better. They're going to do an AoE slam that does quite a bit of damage, and they're going to do an impale that puts down swirls in front of them and then sends out a shard forward. The web mages in the area are going to do a revolting volley that needs to be interrupted or everybody takes quite a bit of poison damage. The most dangerous mob in the area are the sentry stag shells. These things are going to do an alarm shrill after a short duration, which calls all nearby packs to come and charge in. They cannot be interrupted, but they can be stunned. You need to burn these things down, giving them CC'd to stop way too many enemies from getting pulled in. Make your way along the northern side to find this web mage and two of those stag beetles channeling into a pathway. Kill the stag beetles quick and then burn down the mage to make your way towards the second boss. And then you're on to a noob zect. This Nerubian general is quite a powerful boss and a very big zone control fight. As you can see around him at the start, there's going to be two purple swarms moving around him. He'll summon more of these throughout the fight and you just need to move out of them if they're ever floating towards you. These do a lot of damage to any players that are within them building up a stacking debuff that slows you down and does increased damage every second. Impale is a large set of swirls he's going to put down in front of him and then erupt several impaling spikes from. This is going to cause you to be doing constant sidesteps and might make you sidestep into one of those swarms. Burrowing Charge, he's going to mark one player with a red triangle. That player needs to move out of the group and everybody needs to move away from them. 
He'll charge towards that player, knocking back and damaging everybody in between. Then he'll immediately cast an Impale, turning and casting back towards the player that he just knocked up. Upon reaching 100 energy, he's going to begin Eye of the Swarm. This causes him to move to the center of the area and create a white circle. Get within the white circle, else you're going to take massive damage from the surrounding swarm. This circle will now slowly move throughout the arena, and you need to stay within it while still dealing with all the other mechanics. Impales, burrows, and the purple swarms. This tightens up the room you have available to deal with to take this boss down. Once he runs out of energy, this phase will end, and you'll begin phase 1 all over again. Rotate through that to take this boss down. From here, we're heading into the main temple in the back. A Blood Overseer is guarding the front, which is a bit of a mini boss, a Venom Volley that you need to interrupt, and she'll put down some brown swirls that you need to step out of. Make your way into the main temple, there's a lot of packs all over the place, but you don't have to pull most of them. Head your way forward and watch out for these flying packs. These little flying spiders are going to have jars on them. If they ever take damage, they drop the jar, which puts a pool on the ground that will root players and deal quite a bit of damage to them. Hit these things from range to make them drop their pools, and then pull them in and take them down. The Neurubian Hauler here will do a massive slam that will stun everybody nearby and do quite a bit of damage. He's a pain to deal with if you're dealing with any other mobs. I very much recommend pulling him on his own and burning him quickly. Two more of those Blood Overseers are past him and fighting them at the same time as fighting him can become a problem if he stuns everybody while they're casting their Venom Volleys. With all that taken down, we can move on to the final boss. Kikatal the Harvester. This boss only really has three abilities. Venom Volley can be interrupted, else it's going to deal massive nature damage to all players for 10 seconds. Erupting webs will spawn webs around the area that you need to sidestep out of or get rooted and stunned. And then Cosmic Singularity is going to pull everybody in and after a delay, deal 2.4 million shadow damage to all players nearby and knock them back. This is also going to reduce your damage done by 75% for 12 seconds, so you definitely don't want to get hit by this even if you have a cooldown that will let you survive it. To be able to deal with this, small blood workers are going to be constantly moving throughout the arena. They'll be carrying those jars that the flyers had earlier, and if you damage them, they'll drop the jar and spill blood on the ground. If you ever touch this blood, you take quite a bit of damage, but you get rooted. As the boss begins to cast Cosmic Singularity, all players should find one of the puddles on the ground and run into it to become rooted. This will stop you from getting pulled in, and you won't take that unnecessary damage. So constantly rotate through these three abilities until you take down this boss and finish the dungeon. Arakara City of Echoes is done. I hope this guide helped you out. I'm Zesty Fresh, this is Games, and we'll catch you guys next time.